Hey guys, it's Curtis here and welcome to my new series, Bikes That Need To Be Made. So what is this series? Well, the title pretty much gives it away, right? It's bikes I think should be on the market and hopefully you do too. And I'm gonna break down why they should be on the market and if the manufacturer is actually gonna make them. All right, let's get into it. When the Honda CRF450L was announced, it had a lot of hype going for it. Hell, I was excited. There was talk of surface intervals similar to that of a CRF250L, a reasonable size fuel tank, solid road handling, all the while still being a serious off-road machine. What we got was, well, pretty much another CRF450X. So it's an X with some mirrors. Mm, you could say that. I just did. Duh. Don't get me wrong, it's by all accounts a great machine, but it's not quite the souped up 250L a lot of people were after. Service intervals are much shorter than originally expected. Oil and filter changes are at 1,000 kilometers and valve checks are every 3,000 kilometers. This is a far cry from the 250L's 12,000 kilometer oil change and 24,000 kilometer valve checks. The fuel tank is also a tiny two gallons. What's that, seven liters? and the price is an eye-watering 10,500 US dollars. It's a bit more acceptable in Australia at 12,999, but man, that's not what I thought a Honda L would cost. Positives are there is a proper subframe that can handle luggage. It's a good off-road machine with high quality suspension, the engine performance is solid, and road performance isn't too bad. Honda's employed some anti-vibration and noise damping techniques like they put some foam in the swing arm, rubber back sprockets and some sound deadening engine covers as well. Honda, what we wanted, well I wanted, was a proper dual sport bike that suits the L name. Further to that, I want a proper rally version. Think the CRF 250L rally, but actually good. The 250L rally looks great, but it's underpowered, heavy and under suspended. You need to spend a fair bit of money on it to get it up to spec if you're a reasonably advanced trail rider. So what does a CRF 450L rally need? For starters, a bigger tank, let's say 15 litres or more. Why manufacturers persist with putting shitty little 7 litre tanks on bikes, I don't understand. This isn't a motocross bike people, it needs to ride for more than 30 minutes. Next, the power needs to stay about the same. I think at the moment it's roughly 45 horsepower. That's a good amount. The suspension, keep the same as well. I'd probably put in some heavier springs, but that's about it. And it can't turn into a fat ass as well. Like the 250L rally is significantly heavier than the standard 250L. Look, this may sound like a pipe dream, but so many people want this and do exactly the same mods to their dual sport bikes. Now, Honda has already toyed with this idea. In late 2018 at EICMA, they showed off a 450L rally concept. This honestly looks freaking badass. It's heavily modeled off the Honda Dakar bike with the reported 20-ish litre dual fuel tank that also acts as engine protection, similar to the KTM 790 Adventure or the CRF 250L rally. It also has an underslung exhaust, giving you storage space where the exhaust usually runs on a standard 450L. This would be great for toolkits or oil. Further to this, they've added in a tower for navigation and wind protection. Give us this bike Honda, this is what we want. Unfortunately, you are still gonna have the relatively short service intervals. Why? Because the 450L is just a detuned CRF450R motor. And the CRF450R is just a highly strung race engine with a pretty small oil capacity. Yes, there are some changes, don't get me wrong, I think it's got about 10, horsepower less than a different piston, but it's extremely similar. Look, 1,000 kilometer service intervals are pretty damn good for a dedicated dirt bike. That's a lot of single track and weekends of riding. Hell, that's not even bad for some light adventure work, but what we really need is something between the road base 250L intervals and the 450L intervals. Realistically, you probably could stretch out the 1,000 kilometer intervals if you're not caning the ass out of it all the time, this is not ideal though. I mean, look at Adam Riemann on his KTM EXC 500s. He rode them from Austria to Egypt and he really stretched out the intervals and apparently had no other problems. But 
he was supplied these bikes by KTM. If it was my own bike and my own money, I'd be pretty reluctant to do this. So, do I think Honda is going to make a CRF50L rally? You would think since they did a concept, yes. But I honestly don't think they are. They can't change the service intervals without spending a ton of money redesigning the engine. Even though I think you could get away with leaving it as is, and probably the biggest reason is price. The CRF50L is already bloody expensive. So, this is going to push it out even more. I'm thinking it'll be up in the $16,000 Australian range, and that's getting pretty bloody close to an Africa Twin. And with all this talk of a baby Africa Twin happening, I just can't see it transpiring from a company like Honda, who is very much nickels and dimes based. So what does everyone think? Do you think that Honda should make a CRF 450L rally? Let me know in the comments. I'll be doing plenty more of these videos, guys. I've got a few ideas for bikes that I think need to be made. All right, catch us.